<laughs> now they just look at my deck and be like, are you stupid why are you playing 60 cards? Maybe I am stupid, but I had a reason to be stupid. Hey, I'm Super Senpai, and today we're gonna be talking about Master Duel at the YCS. Now I just entered the first ever YCS Master Duel and I got into the semifinals, which means nothing because there's only eight people competing. It's actually a lot more challenging than expected. So I hope this guy will help you, you know, calm yourself down and make sure you're ready to play. Now the first thing is sign up. For the YCS, it, there is a Discord channel that you have to join. It may be different for future tournaments, but for now, make sure you're in the right Discord channel because I was in the stores Discord channel and I was waiting till the minute and it's like, your tournament starting. I'm like, oh shoot. So just make sure you're in the right Discord and you can ask people around in case you don't know you're in the right place. I do want to mention Side Deck Gaming Cafe did a great job of hosting for the Master Duel portion. I know for them, they have over 50 people pinging them every minute saying that, hey, I got to buy, my opponent didn't show up. I know it's a pain in the so you know, I give you guys credit for hosting this tournament as smooth as possible. Now, once you're signed up, you'll be notified and you're gonna just wait in the waiting channel. And then they'll give you a dueling room code and master duel, and you're ready to play your opponent based on the matchup. To join the room, you click duel, you click free room, and then you enter a room, and then you put in the code of the room at the top right corner of the screen. Five, eight, sure. Uh, yeah, something like that. Pretty simple. I didn't know about this feature, to be honest, so this worked out perfectly. Now, the rules for the tournament. First things first, it's best out of three. That means you have to win two out of three of the games. And the rounds are 15 minutes long. And I assume that if it goes into overtime, you'll have to play the, you know, you go overtime role in the TCG, which is uh, you get one turn and whoever has the higher life points wins kind of BS, but in Master Duel, duels finish really quick, so you don't really have to worry about that situation. So now let's talk about your deck, which is, you can play any deck you want, then you can side deck into any other deck, which sounds dumb, which it is, but in Master Duel, it's kind of hard to, you know, do a proper side deck. One minute you can play Odd Eyes, the next minute you can play Banishing, um, I know in their perspective it is, you know, you have a side deck, which is like, looks like this versus your main deck, but because of how Master Duel is made, uh, as being a best of one game, side decking's UI sucks. So I'll explain a bit how to prepare for this situation, but the reality here is, you could bring three, four, five different decks to the tournament and uh, switch them out based on your matchup or how you feel based on the cards you have available that you purchased in the game. Because of that, the strongest card in this game is a Visa card or MasterCard. But in all seriousness, side deck cards are very expensive. Like I, I don't have Forbidden Droplet or uh, you know, I don't have Nibiru. Uh, I play free to play, so I, I'm very cheap. You can also add and remove cards from the 60 cards total, which is even worse chaos because then it's like oh side deck i'm gonna throw 20 cards in i'm gonna take 20 cards out like that kind of like i don't know what the hell the opponent's gonna play next that's what makes it very difficult to play this kind of tournament but there is a condition the first duel you play has to be the original deck you built how do they enforce this they do not but i know in the future they probably will enforce it by saying you need to give a screenshot of your deck list in your first game and then they just make sure that you show that deck every game but for now, they didn't because the tournament was very small, so it wasn't a big deal at the time. You have three minutes to do side decking, which players were very nice to me because it took me five minutes to figure out how to make a side deck, which it was a pain in the butt. Uh, but I will explain how to do side decking in a bit in this video. If you get disconnected, the game will decide the result. If both players are disconnected, the game just restarts and you just redo it again. And last rule, which is bothersome, Game two and game three of each round are decided by coin flips. So there's a no advantage for side decking when you yourself don't know if you're going first or second in the game. Winning the first game is the highest advantage because then you know that like no matter what you do, your opponent's more stressing out trying to match you even though they don't know what you're playing. But this makes it a very, very big disadvantage for the loser because they have more stress trying to figure out which deck to play if they want to stick to their deck or they want to switch decks or they want to do side decking because they don't know if they're going to go first next game. And especially in this meta, going first wins you games, which is really brutal. So now let's talk about how to prepare your deck for your tournament. So for me, I use Odd Eyes. Odd Eyes is my favorite deck. You guys know I have 20,000 views on that video because of how much I really love this deck. If you want to make a side deck properly, 
All you have to do is click on the deck, click review copy, and then just copy deck. Yep. You just make a copy, and then your deck's over here, click edit, and then rename your deck so it's easier for you to see. Uh, side L Ditch, for example, if your side deck is based on Eldish type of decks. Um, I would recommend having one deck that's the original deck you play with, and then one that's more favored towards, you know, uh, hand trap oriented or uh, grave oriented, spell trap oriented. But I will also recommend just have two or three different decks that if you know one deck you have a disadvantage against your opponent, um, you can just swap out into it and swap specific cards into it too. I will recommend have a main deck, have a side deck. So you, if you know your opponent, um, especially for Pendra for me, if they, if they put anti spell fragrance, I am screwed. So if that happens, I should just switch up decks and then they can't counter me. I, I wouldn't suggest this because I hate this deck, but um, Eldritch and Dryden are not a bad choice to have as one of your decks because if you're playing and they think you're playing that and you play a different deck, they're going to counter, they're going to try side deck you completely with the wrong tools like Forbidden Droplet and Kaijus. And then if you end up just not having boss monster, just having a more spam deck, you could literally beat your opponent because they miss sided. Yeah, but doing this way, having your decks prepared before the tournament is much comfortable for you to just switch a deck during your table. So because you make your deck, it's more comfortable for you to pick around like, oh, I think I want to go with my standard deck because there's not much difference for this versus to my opponent. But if I feel like my opponent is more like they have multiple ways to get out of the situation. So I have to negate them with hand traps. I can't negate them on my turn. So I'll put Gamma in there. I will put um, Call by the Graves. It really depends on like how comfortable you are saying, I want my standard deck. I want more, you know, defensive, more offensive. Um, do I want to play a different deck completely? So I will say, if you are crazy, it may be advantageous for you to play three different decks just to see your opponent can handle the three different scenarios. There is also advantage if you surrender early while just the opponent seeing your cards. It may put them in the worst situation because you know one of their decks and you know that they invested too much money into that one deck to play. So do they want to switch out or do you want to stay the same? Then you can counter that completely. I'm going to talk about the coin flip again. If you side deck going first and you lose the coin toss, you're going to have a lot of side deck cards raw in your deck. <laughs> for me, I built my deck to go second. so. No matter what happens with a coin flip, I am prepared to go second. Which cost me in the semifinals in game 2 and 3 because I said, look, I'm going to go second. I got evenly matched. I got called by the graves. I got Cypher game Gamma. I can counter the main important cards and I can go for an OTK. Unfortunately, he also had the counters of Ash and like... While he was summoning Smogon, he picked the Negator, not the Special Summoner. And I lost many game because the negator stopped evenly matched. So that was a rough ending for me. Now, if you lose, how should you feel? And this is different than a regular duel where you know the opponent's decks, you know there's a limit to how many cards they can really switch out because they registered beforehand. This is basically playing three different duelists per round, which means coin flips win you games 75% of the time, especially in this meta, unless you have a magical way to go second and still win no matter what. It's all about board breaking and it's less about skill, more about luck, making sure you can make it the unbreakable board or you can break the board. Now, quick note, if you want to edit your deck during the term as well, you can just leave the room, go to your deck and then edit your deck. And then you can switch cards in and out and go back in again. Do that for your side deck because you still need your main deck to still can stay because it's the same. And then you can just go duel. And then you go back to the free duel, the duel room, and then you'll be fine in that room. Side decking. There is no right answer to side decking. And this is my side deck version of my pendulum deck, which I added gammas in there, uh, call by the grave. I honestly was considering lava golems just to get rid of the boss monsters. Droplet's a great card if I can afford it against the boss monsters. Nibiru is a good card too if you know your opponent loves the special summon. If your opponent is playing more Eldritch based, you want to go for Twin Twisters, the Dango Sekas, uh, the Imperial uh, Infinite Imperidance, Lightning Storm because you want to get rid of those cards as fast as you can. And Reaper is a good card too. Uh, and don't forget the extra deck too. You can play any extra deck card you want. This well is a great card for example. If you know your opponent is going to play Heavy Grave, swap in an extra deck. Build a side deck version of your deck that you know it can counter against Grave and build one that you can counter against special summon and build one you can counter against spells or traps. Because of that method, then it allows you to, you know, 
have the advantage to say, I know where your deck is probably going to be played and I got the outs for it. Or you could be like me and, you know, play 60 cards, play like you're playing second with even the matches. And no matter what the coin flip is, most likely you're going to go second. So it wouldn't matter. I am tempted. I am, I am so freaking tempted but to put this bad boy in there just so I had to pop it get a boss monster in the field and be like look I know you hate pendulums but I got something for you yeah overall what I thought about my first YCS dual master I liked it and I hated it yes I I, I feel both I like that I could play at the comfort at home in my pajamas I like the ruling wasn't an issue as it's programmed in the game. I like how fast it is compared to real Yu-Gi-Oh! Because you, you know, real Yu-Gi-Oh! takes a long time. And overall, it felt like anyone could win. Now, what I hate, anyone could win. Because it's a coin flip every game. Because it's not like, it's not like a tournament where it's like, back, forth, back, hopefully you can counter it, and you know you're going second, you're going to put it that way. At the beginning of the tournament, I did have a gentleman's agreement and allowed the loser to decide and tell the winner during the coin flip, if they want to go first or second. This made it more fair, and I hope they add this to the future tournaments. But again, coin flip every game just is kind of BS. I don't like how you can have completely different decks game two and game three, and I hope they change this interface for the best out of three, or else it's not best out of three, it's best. It feels more like three different duelists, and you just gotta be two of them. It just doesn't, you know, feel right. But it is still best out of three, so I can't really complain. I also do wish we had the ability to talk to each other during the tournament, but because of how the seats were taken for the actual players of the tournament, uh, we couldn't really talk to each other. We just play online. Which kind of sucks for me because I play a 60 card deck with my, my pendulums. And I want to tell my opponent, look, like I have a 60 card deck. What do you have, 40? Oh, you know, I, that's all I need to know. And my opponent be like, yo, what the hell? Why are you playing 60 cards? Are you playing Lice Worm? Now they just look at my deck and be like, are you stupid? Why are you playing 60 cards? Maybe I am stupid. But I had a reason to be stupid. Now, because of how you can switch your decks every single game, they're probably better off doing, you know, best out of one tournament and whoever scores the most wins, wins the tournament. Which now I think of it, that will probably mean Nurse Burn will win if they win every single coin flip. So, yeah, maybe that's not the best idea. Anyways, I do hope this helps you prepare for your next YCS Master Duel tournament. Or any Master Duel tournament in the future. And here's the summary steps. Step 1. Make sure you're registered on Discord and the right one. Because I wasn't. And that made me scared. So yeah, don't go through the wrong one. Number two, make sure you have a main deck and then you have a copy of your main deck for side deck purposes to switch cards out or you know switch out during tournament. Or just have a butt ton of decks to switch in and out. And number three, have fun and think. It's just three different players per round. So every game, imagine you're ranking up to platinum and you need two wins to get there. So don't worry about losing one game. You just need to win two of them and you get there. Just a regular day and master duel. If you like this guide, please share because I wish someone told me about these rules beforehand. Um, but if they do improve some things, that's great. But I just do want to prepare you so you don't feel worried when you have to decide that, when you have to do the interface, when you meet people the first time. This is how it goes. But I will say, I did end up winning one ticket for making the semifinals, which gets me a sticker, which I gave to my friend. But I also did get three pack cards for entering, so. I ended up being a winner, so I enjoyed my time. Will I do it again? Why not? It's Yu-Gi-Oh! And we all love Yu-Gi-Oh! if you're watching this video. I enjoyed my time. I will recommend anyone. If you love Master Duel, go for a tournament. It's a fun experience and it makes you really want to do better for your deck and make sure you know how to make your deck the best way possible in any scenario. So thanks for watching. I do hope you keep watching my channel. I got a few more decks coming out and yeah, I still think about the misplays I made. So. That does not change for a Yu-Gi-Oh! player.